It is a river of grace and beauty. A gentle river that can suddenly rise to match Mother Nature's anger. It is a river harboring untold stories and secrets. A place of solace that can quickly turn to test the courage of men. But timeless it flows across the ages, a tangible, unwavering link to yesterday's valor. Victory or death. As the Delaware winds the bend towards Washington Crossing, it is as it was more than 200 years ago, a physical boundary between Pennsylvania and New Jersey, an obstacle that when crossed on Christmas night, 1776, would change the course of America's struggle for independence. Images of that night burn vividly in our minds. Idealized in famous paintings and annual reenactments, George Washington stands proudly aboard a Durham boat, leading his weary troops in a desperate attempt to seize victory. Evoking legacies of courage and patriotism, our vision of Washington crossing, like the Delaware, is timeless, forever etched in our national consciousness. Turbulence erupted in the American colonies with the Stamp Act of 1765. For the next 11 years, similar actions fueled discontent among the colonists and protests against the British Crown increased. In July 1776, the colonists declared their independence and chose George Washington to lead the Revolutionary Army. But as summer turned to fall, Visions of freedom were repeatedly dashed by crushing defeats. Nearly every battle in New York and New Jersey lost to well-equipped superior British forces. Seizing the upper hand, the British offered amnesty to colonists willing to renounce the rebel cause. The Crown's offer, along with desertion, prisoner, and death counts, decimated the revolutionary troops to just over 4,000 men. Then a respite. The British advance on Philadelphia was stopped, not by battle, but quick thinking by General Washington, who ordered every boat taken to the Pennsylvania side of the Delaware River. The boats and craft all along the Delaware side should be secured, particularly the Durham boats used for transportation of produce down the river. Parties should be sent to all landings to have them removed to the other side hauled up and put under proper guards. The mighty river became a natural barrier against engagement, giving American troops sorely needed time to regroup. Mid-December, 1776, amidst a bitter cold, fighting exhaustion and hunger, a desperate colonial army slowly crossed into Pennsylvania. Suddenly, a man staggered out of line and came toward me, his beard long and his face full of sores, which so disfigured him that he was not known by me on first sight. Only when he spoke did I recognize my brother, James. Lacking food and clothing for his soldiers and knowing that their terms of enlistment would expire at the end of December, General Washington agonized over the condition of his troops. It cannot be expected that men worn out with a fatiguing campaign and in want of even necessary clothing at the most inclement season of the year will or can stay beyond their engagement. When I reflect upon what our situation in this quarter will be in 10 days from this time, I am almost led to despair. As the British waited for the river to freeze and allow passage into Philadelphia, divided loyalties plagued the Delaware Valley. Some settlers remained loyal to the crown. Some threw their support to the Patriot cause. Others found themselves undecided. And the Quaker population stayed neutral, 
due to deep pacifist beliefs. But their allegiances had little bearing on the terror they endured. Both armies seized livestock and food, plundered and ravaged all in their path. Farmers became refugees, and women often left alone in their houses suffered the savageries of war. I thought of my lonely situation with no husband to cheer with a voice of love, my sinking spirits, my little flock too without a father. News comes from many that the British army is advancing towards us. Tories are the cursedest rascals among us, the most wicked, villainous, and oppressive. They lead the relentless foreigners to the houses of their neighbors and strip the poor women and children of everything they have to eat or wear. And after plundering them in this sort, the brutes often ravish the mothers and daughters. Encamped along the Delaware River, American soldiers suffered the wind and bitter cold. General Washington charts a daring plan to surprise the waiting enemy troops. Christmas Day at night, one hour before day, is the time fixed for our attempt on Trenton. For heaven's sake, keep this to yourself. Necessity, dire necessity will, nay must, justify my attack. Under the cover of darkness, 2,600 soldiers, 50 horses, cannons and wagons will board rafts and boats, recross the Delaware, and attack the enemy stronghold in Trenton. Two smaller units of American soldiers will also cross the river further downstream at Trenton Ferry and Bristol and converge with Washington's forces at Trenton. Moving fatigued troops across an icy river at night is a risky strategy. Washington, however, is resolute, and his troops are inspired by the words penned by patriot Thomas Paine. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from their duty. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the greater the struggle, the more glorious the victory. Rise up now and help us. Lay your shoulder to the wheel. The heart that does not feel now is dead. The troops were ordered to gather 40 rounds of ammunition for their guns and enough food for three days. Then they marched from their camps to the banks of the ice-laden Delaware. It is fearfully cold and raw, and a snowstorm is setting in. It will be a terrible night for the soldiers who have no shoes. Some of them have tied old rags around their feet. Others are barefoot. But I have not heard a man complain they are ready to suffer any hardship and die rather than give up their liberty. I have just copied the order for marching. In late afternoon, the first boat was launched. Washington planned for an eight-hour crossing, but rushing waters would add another three hours to the bold and dangerous military maneuver. I have never seen Washington so determined as he is now. He stands on the bank of the river wrapped in his cloak superintending the landing of his troops. He is calm and collected, but very determined. The damp, raw night air penetrated the faces of the men, but they pushed on, fighting fatigue and the swift, icy currents of the Delaware, the last boat finally landing in New Jersey around 3 a.m. An eight-hour march into Trenton still loomed. As they advanced through the dawn, the odds of a successful assault and victory in Trenton grew slim. The smaller unit at Trenton Ferry never crossed the Delaware that night. Held back by the ice-driven currents, the soldiers at Bristol succeeded, but abandoned their plans to attack after failing to move their cannons across the river. They returned to Pennsylvania before daybreak. Cold, tired, and without the cover of darkness, Washington and his troops march towards Trenton through snow and hail, unsure if the enemy would learn of their advance. 
Their strategy was to attack the enemy from the north and west by sending two columns of men on separate paths, reaching Trenton concurrently. A daring and difficult battle plan, but the American forces converged on the battlefield. Trenton was being held by the Hessians, German mercenaries for the British crown. Despite warnings of an attack by the Continental Army, their arrogance would prove folly. The Americans are nothing but a lot of farmers. If they come all they can hope for, it's a good retreat. The well-trained soldiers were caught completely off guard as Washington commandeered the high ground. The Hessians rose to battle, but fell disorganized when Colonel Rawl, many of his officers, and 100 others sustained mortal wounds. After two and a half hours, they were defeated. 500 fled, and more than 900 surrendered. Only a few Americans were wounded. The next day, General Washington informed Congress of his victory. I have the pleasure of congratulating you upon the success of an enterprise which I had formed against a detachment of the enemy laying in Trenton and which was executed yesterday morning. I give justice to the officers and men. I must add that their behavior upon this occasion reflects the highest honor upon them. The difficulty of passing the river in a very severe night and their march through a violent storm of snow and hail did not in the least abate their ardor. But when they came to the charge, each seemed to vie the other in pressing forward. Although a relatively small battle, the surprise victory over a European power elevated the stature of the ill-equipped colonists in the eyes of the world. Washington's successful crossing of the Delaware and victory at Trenton gave his army new life and set the stage for two more victories. Within 10 days, the Continental Army would defeat the British twice more, again in Trenton, and then Princeton. The Patriots' struggle for freedom continued for five more years. It ended in 1781, when British General Lord Cornwallis surrendered his troops in Yorktown. Independence was finally theirs. As Cornwallis conceded, he told General Washington, Fame will gather your brightest laurels from the banks of the Delaware. With those words, Washington's daring crossing would forever live as the turning point in the revolution. Washington Crossing Historic Park was established to commemorate the courage and valor those who crossed the Delaware River on that cold Christmas night in 1776. We invite you to explore the park and the stories of those brave men and women who suffered so that we could breathe the air of freedom. In the lower park, be sure to visit McConkie's Ferry Inn, the Malin Taylor House, Durham Boat Barn, Blacksmith Shop, Hibbs House and Fry House. Upstream, you'll find the Thompson Neely House and Barn, Thompson Neely Grist Mill, Revolutionary Soldier Cemetery, and Bowman's Hill Tower. And enjoy the now serene setting, as well as other nearby historical sites. Take time now to explore an important place in American history, right here along the timeless Delaware River, where an act of dire necessity turned the tide of America's quest for independence. <laughs>